things you want to have on hand and buy now before the prices go up anymore. Now, these are in no particular order, okay? These are just 25 things that I sit down and I thought about and I was just like, what are the 25 things that everybody out there really needs to concentrate on trying to succeed in putting up to have? And here we go. So number one, canned vegetables or frozen vegetables. Because just think, if you live up north and it's zero out or 20 below or whatever else, and if you lose power, uh, put your frozen goods outside. They're not going to thaw. You can put them right out there in a cooler or whatever and bury it with snow and it'll stay frozen for a very long time. Uh, canned potatoes is another one I think everybody should be looking into. Canned beans of all kinds. Now, that can be anything from kidney beans, black beans. That can be pork and beans. That can be uh, baked beans. Whatever you want. Beans of all kinds in cans. Now, I don't have dry beans on here. For a simple fact is, a lot of people do not really understand the importance of how to cook dried beans. They don't realize that some of these beans, if you don't rinse them properly and follow the methods, they can make you very sick or even kill you. So that's why I'm using canned beans because all the dangerous thought process has been taken out of the equation for you out there. So you can just open them up and they're ready to go. So that's why we're using canned beans instead of dried beans. Now, if you wanted to store beans for long-term, dry beans is what you'd want. Canned meats of all kinds, all right? Now, you can get all different types of canned meats. They are running a little scarce in some stores, and then other stores have them, but they're charging you an arm and a leg for them. So, you have to do your homework on your canned meats and try to score the best deals that you can. Rice. Rice is very important. Rice is the number one prepping product besides water. All right. So having rice will get you through just about anything, especially along with pasta. Pasta and rice go hand in hand. They'll last for a very, very long time, folks. If you store them properly and everything else, You'll always have something to put in your belly one way or the other. You can use either one of those and add just about anything to it. Voila, you have a meal, you have dinner for you and your family. Okay, pasta sauce, any type of pasta sauce that you like. Right now, the cheapest one still is Hunt's. Gravies of all kind. So you can buy canned gravy, jarred gravy, or packets of dry gravy. Because this way here, you have something to mix in with your rice, your pasta, or your potatoes, or whatever. It won't be so bad. So you can take and you can, you have, you know, your gravies, your sauces, and all this type of stuff. You can do just about anything with all that. Flour. Make sure that you do have flour in your pantry. Extra flour in case you need to make bread or anything of that nature. Sugar. Make sure you have extra sugar and those type of things. Salt. Make sure you have salt because salt can be used for a lot of different things also. Salt has a lot of different uses. Yeast. This way you can make your flour, but you can make flour without yeast. There are recipes out there. I would highly suggest that people look into that. Oil and shortening. All right. Make sure that you do have oil and shortening for any type of cooking, baking, any of that type of stuff. If possible, Stock up on butter, freeze it. Now, when I went to my Walmart today, my rinky dinky little Walmart that they call a super center, which eh, is far from super, um, they they uh, they had no butter, uh, Walmart's butter. They didn't have any. They had the non-salted version, uh, but they didn't have any salted. Pancake mix. Pancake mix is a big one because guess what, folks? If you have kids, you can make them pancakes. It's a hot meal. Everybody loves pan pancakes. So having pancake mix is a, a big thing. Make sure you have plenty of it. 
salt and sand for your sidewalk and driveways. This is something a lot of people don't think about. Another one of those things until the storm comes and well, I don't have any salt or sand to put down in my driveways. Now, a lot of the, these, some of these things are for people that live in the north. Us people live in the south. Obviously, we do not have to worry about that. But there is a lot of people that live in a lot of areas that do have to deal with the wintertime weather. And that's why we are bringing that up right now. So, you know, having that kind of stuff ready to go is a plus. A good snow shovel is also something that you're going to need if you live in the north. All right, make sure that you do buy, don't buy a, a cheap one from the dollar store. Spend the money, go to a good hardware store or something and buy a very good snow shovel that's going to get you through the winter and do the job and not break your back. Everybody should have an emergency go bag for your car, especially if you're going to be traveling at all this upcoming holiday season. This way here you have some emergency supplies and things of that nature in there also. And you know, if something happens, you break down or whatever else, you have something to fall back on. You also want to make sure that you do carry extra blankets in your car also. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to throw an extra blanket in the back of your trunk or something or the back seat or whatever during the winter time, just on a chance. If you did break down, you got something extra to try to keep you warm until help arrives or you can contact somebody or whatever. All right, extra water in your car is also a bonus and having extra water also in your home is a bonus also. You also wanna make sure that you do have a good first aid kit. There's a lot of stuff that is going around. I'm sure a lot of you heard how the government is, uh, they just spent $290 million on buying these new drugs that were approved by the FDA that is basically made for um, nuclear radiation. Now, first off, why are they buying all this product? And secondly, they uh, did say, they came out with a statement and said that these were already in the works to be purchased, has nothing to do with any threats or anything else that is going on. Yeah, okay. So basically, you're seeing that the government is stocking up on all this type of stuff. And maybe you should be looking into whatever you need to do to put in your first aid kit in case of something like that may happen. We don't know where any of this is going, but it doesn't hurt to be prepared at all at this point in time. Uh, next on the list is a fire extinguisher. Make sure that you do have a fire extinguisher. Everybody should have one in your home. A lot of people don't carry them in their cars or anything, but you should have one in your home. Now's a good time to check it as long with your your nine volt batteries and your smoke detectors and your carbon dioxide detectors. Okay, so you make sure all those things, if they're not hardwired, if you live in an older home and make sure that those batteries and stuff are all in good working order. Emergency power supplies, battery banks or generators. All right, so you wanna make sure that you do have something to fall back on in case the power does go out and you don't have any way to heat your home. You want to make sure that you have either a generator or a battery bank that maybe could fire up your furnace or run your um, refrigerator, this type of stuff, um, so that you can still stay where you are because you may not be able to leave depending on you know what kind of a storm it is. I mean, if it's an ice storm, look at the one that hit Texas not too long ago and devastated them. People were, they didn't know what to do. They're not used to that kind of stuff. You know, everything goes around in these big, huge cycles. And so having emergency power of some sort as a backup is something that you really want to be pondering and thinking about, especially right now. I mean, you got all these huge stores running all these great deals and stuff. Maybe you can find a battery bank or a generator or something like that. It might uh, help you out in a time of need. You need a backup heat source. All right. So either you need something that runs on propane, kerosene, or electric. All right, something that you can power up, uh, something that you can run safely in your home. Don't buy some of these cheap Chinese-made pieces of crap that are out there and it's going to burn down your house or you know hurt somebody or kill somebody in your family. You got to use your head, do your research on those types of products and make sure 
that they're good quality. There hasn't been any issues with them. They haven't been recalled for anything and all this different types of stuff. All right. We really have to be paying attention to everything that is going on when we are purchasing these type of things, especially when it comes to external heat source that we're going to be using in our homes to try to get through the storm until either the power comes on or somebody can come fix the issue uh, with the furnace or whatever. And lastly, but not least, uh, a good plan to get you through any obstacles you will run across this winter. So having a plan in place to help you get around these obstacles that you probably could be running up against. Maybe you live in an area, you get a lot of snow. Maybe you live in an area, you get ice. These type of things, having a plan in place. This has been 25 things that I think everybody should be stocking up on. There's two extras, honey and pure maple syrup. All right. Honey can be used as a sweetener and so can pure maple syrup. And both of them will last a very long time. You need to be prepared. That's the whole name of the game. The name of the game on this channel is to make sure that people are prepared. People need to realize that this winter is going to be real ugly for a lot of folks. And it's not going to be because of the winter. Now, you know, the Farmer's Act, Almanac has predicted, you know, all this different kind of stuff for all the different parts of the country, just like it has been doing for, what, 200 years or something. What I am talking about is the stuff that is coming down the pike that we know that we're being told is going to be happening. It's not like they're hiding it from us, folks. The government's telling us, you're screwed. <laughs> Plain and simple. It's right there in black and white. You know, they're not hiding it from us. We can't sit back and say, well, nobody told us. They're telling us. They've already told us about the energy prices, the food prices. They've already told us about the interest rate hikes because inflation hasn't come down. <laughs> 